tell the truth, Brian. What? Right, just tell the truth now. What do you think when you see someone, say you're at the traffic lights in your little Peugeot that we've mm-hmm. got, and then next to you, you just hear this, vroom, vroom, vroom. Well, ne- Tesla. Next to you <laughs> is a really, really expensive car. And in the car driving seat is a really good looking guy. A he's yank. Got, he's got, no, not a yank. <laughs> he's got his elbow out the window. Yeah. And he looks at you a little bit. Dis- no, no, actually not disdain. Looks down he looks, at me. No, no, no. He doesn't look down no. at you. Okay. He doesn't look down at you. He looks across. He smiles. Yeah. But as he pulls away, he leaves you in a cloud of dust. Yeah. What is your first thought about that man driving that car? Cock. <laughs> Welcome to the NZ Ahead podcast. Everything you need to know about moving to and living in New Zealand. There's a whole world here. So nice to be with you again. We call Otiorora on here, bro. We are your hosts, Liz and Brian. Amazing New Zealand in the Southern Seas. See, that's where I belong. That's home. Hello and welcome to the NZ Ahead podcast. I'm Liz. And I'm Brian. And today we're going to be talking to you about things we don't like about New Zealand or certainly things that we struggle with in New Zealand. Mm. And the reason we're bringing you this podcast is because a guy on our in our community, he sent me a private message. He said to me, Is there anything you don't like about New Zealand? Because you're always so positive about the country. There's got to be something you don't like. And it was like, hmm, actually, you've got a point. We can make a podcast about that. So, yeah, this is for you, Will, because you asked and we've delivered. But before we jump into the show, before we disclose what it is we don't like about New Zealand, we've got um, a, a couple of small announcements to make. The first one being, from now on, um, the NZ Ahead podcast is going to be twice a month. Rather than a weekly show, we're putting it down to two a month. We wanted to get a certain amount of content on this particular show to help you in that move to New Zealand, coming over here as a skilled migrant. You know, I'm bringing your skills down here to New Zealand to help out and change the way you're going to live. And the reason why we've got a certain amount is because we have a community and a guide that helps people move to New Zealand. So it's it's a, a paid for community. Uh, and with that, you get access to our guide, which includes uh, hours of videos, extra podcasts, and just great stuff that will help you decide about moving over here. Not even so much decide, it will just help you and ease that move to come to New Zealand. It really, really will. Actually, Brian, it does help you decide because so many yes, people does, yes. have said to me, without this without this yep. guide, without this membership, I would not be coming to New Zealand. It's as simple as that. It just yep. gives you that extra support that you need to move to New Zealand. And as Brian said, if you ever run out of content, you need to just go over to, to um, and become par- part of that membership group because there is hours and hours of unreleased you've never seen it before you've never heard the podcast before videos and podcasts and interviews with new immigrants and interviews with community members and interviews with specialist teachers and you know uh, people who have been here and like anyway there's hours and hours of stuff over there so if you're serious about moving to New Zealand and you're thinking well I can't I'm not just hanging around here waiting for two um, two podcasts a month then think about going over to the membership and joining us, becoming part of our family yeah. over there. You can you can direct message us and uh, things like that. No, so. don't tell them that, Bri. We'll, right, never, okay. we'll never be able to phone. You can't direct me. <laughs> direct, <laughs> it, direct it. me. No, you can. You have got direct access to <laughs> us. Yeah, you so, do. Yeah. So that was the first thing. So if you next week, if you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs thinking, oh, where's my New Zealand content? Remember, we've told you it's only going to yeah. be coming out every other week. Um, you can always go over to our other podcast. It's a drama. Um, which will also be every other week. So you've sort of like got a weekly, we've, we've equaled it out, haven't we, Brian? Yeah, we have, yeah, because we can only do so many things. We can. Um, you know, because yeah, life life gets in the way and um, as much as well, I love to do a life, podcast every it? day, well, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, and the other news I just wanted to share with you as well is if you haven't signed up for our free five-day video guide, that video guide is what leads you it sort of funnels you down into the lovely little paved road of becoming a member into this community. And we've talked about this before. The reason that we ask you to 
take those free five days of videos is because one, we're generous, two, they're brilliant and we worked really hard and we want someone to watch them. Yeah. And three, it shows that you're really committed and love this country as much as we do. And that's the sort of people that we want around us. Yeah. That's the sort of people we want in the community. So mm. if you are sitting there thinking, oh, this is just me, you know, I want to move to New Zealand. I'm not quite sure what the next move is. Take the free five day video guide, get to day five. And from there, you will be given, you know, the, the chance to just join and become a member of our beautiful family, our, our whanau, as they say in New Zealand. And yeah. we will help you with hours of videos and podcasts. So to get that free five day video guide, you need to go to www.nzahead slash free. Oh, did I miss out the dot com? Yeah, you missed out the dot you com. You say it, Brian. You say it yeah, better. Let's well, do it the Kiwi way, hey? It's www.nzahead.com forward slash free, as in F R E E. Yeah. Yeah. So take that and then we'll see you on the other side. Yes. <laughs> yeah, be we'll great. see you in the community. Yeah. Remember, if you're moving to New Zealand and you're looking for an immigration advisor to help you with all the process, the company we recommend are NZ Shores. The guys over there are absolutely brilliant. Loads of members of our NZ Ahead private community use them and they have raved about them. And that's why we recommend them. The brilliant thing about NZ Shores is they offer a free assessment. So if you're wondering whether or not you're eligible to move to New Zealand, you go to their website, you fill out a form and they will contact you and tell you whether or not it's worth moving forward and how they can help you. And that's absolutely free. The way you can get to that assessment form is by going to www.nzshores.com slash Liz. So that's nzshores.com slash Liz. Go over there, fill out the form, and you will be in such good hands with NZ Shores. Right, let's get on with the show. So in answer to your question, what is there anything about New Zealand that you don't like? We've we've it's, we've had to work hard on this, haven't we, Bri? Yep, coming um, up in next week's show, because yeah. there's nothing we don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so see you then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've racked our brains. Um, these are the three things. I think, is there three? Yeah, there's three things. The, that, there, that You could have a list as long as you are, if you want to get really nitty gritty, couldn't you? Like, you know, but yeah, but you could. Well, you, just because like, there'd be certain things like, you know, oh, there's, oh, this, that, and the other. What? You, just anything. It's what? just... Well, it's like people doing donuts on roads and things like, you know, in, in cars and things. It just seems to be a well accepted thing here. Should I write that, that on yeah. my list? Well, you could do. Doing you know. donuts. Doing donuts. Yeah. <laughs> in a V8. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that we, that this, do you know what? This never used to bother me. And it is in the last, I'm going to say the last, actually, I'll be really honest with you. It's since we've started doing YouTube. It's yeah. bothered me because right. I think I'm hearing it more and more in the comments and I've thought, oh, do you know what? I don't like this. I don't like the, how this makes me feel. Yeah. And what this is, is I want to say it's an older generation of Kiwi that still have this thing of like, you're a pom. Um, and even though that word isn't derogatory. Well, it was classed as not derogatory, which for the life of me, I can't really understand how it didn't, uh, how, how that I even got through the courts. You know, because um, I know it's not up to me to make those sort of decisions and the reasons why, but it, probably nobody turned up on the day to say, oh, actually, no, it makes me feel a bit bad. You yeah. Know? Because <laughs> this day and age, you can't say Jack, can you? Like, you know, you can't say anything without upsetting someone, like, you know, mm. it's like, and, and you think you're being politically, um, politically correct and someone will still say, oh, you can't say that, mm. but you can say POM and no one knows what the, where, where the name POM comes from. Um, but it's used in a derogatory way. God, you do know where it comes from. No, that's what people are guessing it is, prisoner of Her Majesty, but or His Majesty. So you don't spell it, you spell it P-O-M, mm. don't you? And it's like, oh, right. Anyway, this won't affect you if you're coming from any other country other than the UK. Yep. And to be honest, I'm going to tell you now, like I said, in the, in, in, in the Kiwi's defence, you don't ever hear it in... Younger, in, in like 40 year olds, 50 year old, you don't hear it, Brian. Not in our circle of friends, oh, yes, you don't. You, you, do you? you? Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. well, I'm going to yeah, say well, you I've don't. I've done a whole podcast on that. Well, when, when, when we uh, we talked about being a plumber. So, yeah, you'll hear it quite oh, a bit okay. on with 
that you know my generation which is 50 odd years old aren't you know yeah and so it's it, it, anything anyone who's like 20 30 years old who have um I don't know, sort of come through that schooling with that political correctness. You tend not to hear it mm. the same because it's almost like, um, I don't know, it is, it's that older generation. It is, definitely. It really is, you know. And it, at the amount of times, and I know, you know, if you put yourself, and don't get me wrong, YouTube, I just want to know, I just want to say, if you're listening from the, to this and you are from, you've come over from YouTube, 98% of the people on YouTube that comment on our stuff are gorgeous yeah, they great. warm yeah. my heart they are just honestly if you read any of those comments you would you'd run over to new zealand because you're like oh my god like, how supportive and how lovely are these people yeah. but i'm talking about the two percent that just say here we go whinging poms get back to where you come from you're just a pom you know we don't need poms like you over here when and it just oh it just gets it me just great so to, much great to get, it gets to be a point where it's just like you're just saying this like the way you're saying it and it's it's not you're not saying it in a positive funny way no. it's not it really is you know it's uh, i don't know it, it you don't see it all the time but you don't when when you hear it it just it's a tiny percentage. Yes, um, it is. It really is. I just but, want to make that clear. Yeah. And, and and Australia had it a lot worse, apparently, like, you know, because they used to have those slogans of like bash upon a day and stuff like that. And, oh, my God. Yeah. And that, that, you know, so and this was going back to the times when there was the one pound pom, as they used to call it, like, you know, um, which you came or the 10 pound pom, wasn't it? Like, mm. you know, and you came out, you get 10 pounds and literally that included your passage and everything. They paid you 10 pounds. Yeah, Can that's you imagine what I mean. that? Yeah. How blessed would that yeah. be? And it was everything. That was How just many hundreds to, of yeah. thousands does it cost you now to get over I it? Know. It just costs you, <laughs> cost you a fortune, doesn't it? So it's, it's all, it, you know, and then they had the ping pong pom, which would basically was the pom that came out um, to, to either New Zealand or Australia and then literally go back, mm. like, you know. Because uh, it was just like, oh, this is not for me. And then they would come back again. And then literally they were ping-ponging around, weren't they? Like, you know. And I don't want you to think that we're being <sighs> crybabies. You know, we're not being like, oh, no, it's, it's not, not fair. You call me a pom. It's not that we can't take it. Because believe me, we can. You know, we've, we, we, we've had worse than that. But after a while, it just you just feel like saying, okay, let's just drop the pom thing, shall yeah. we? But you can see some people come over here <laughs> and me. they almost start to speak with a Kiwi accent. You know, after about a year or so, like, you know, and it's to almost like as if in. like, yeah, they're, they're, they're running, not as much running for cover, but they're just, they're, they're, fil- they're fitting in a lot yeah. better, which, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not into taking on accents and stuff like uh, like that, like, you know, it's a bit like people when they move to America and, you know, English people move to America and they're talking with an American accent. Well, I've told you before, before you start rabbiting on about that, I've told yep. you before, when you do take on accents, it means you're empathetic. So it just yep. means that you're not empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, there you that's go then. It. Are you proud of that? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. so that's that little thing. Yeah. And while we're at it, oh my God, <laughs> here comes the list along with the arm. While we're at it as well, it's a little bit annoying. Oh, but before I jump onto that, I just want to say, if you ask Sonny or Tess, my kids, they're 20 and 17, have you ever been called upon? No, they no, would never have no, heard that term. Would, no. no. So no. I just want to make that clear. It's just, it's that older thing. And all their know. friends are Kiwi friends. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So um, what was I just going to say? Oh, yeah. And the other thing as well that kind of. But I've got to be careful what I say here because I'm a little bit like it myself in certain ways. So I don't want to be a hypocrite. But, you know, when like they'll change, like, say, for example, um, the, the mountain that's behind us is, is referred to all we know it as is Mount Tadanaki. But in the 1950s, it was called Mount Egmont, wasn't it? Yes, it, uh, and, and and a lot, you know, not just the nineteen. Oh right, yeah, it, but it I mean, like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like way back, it's yeah, always it been. It was known. when I believe it was when Cook was off the. Is this is in the 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 the, um, the west coast of the North Island, so the East Cape. Cook was coming by. He could see the mountain. He named it after Lord Egmont, I believe it was, mm. or something, or someone's whatever it was, like you know, and that's where the, the original name in in, in um, the European side of it came from, like you know, right. And that's why it was called Mount Egmont, because uh, basically, you know, the surveyors came over and surveyed the country and, um, and mapped it all out. And that's what it was all mm. going to be called, like, you know. But um, but from the indigenous people, the Maldi people, it was always Tadanaki. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know this for a fact and I, I don't know enough about it to 
sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm imagining that they reinstated that name and said, okay, we're giving it back its original name. And to some people, they refuse to go back and say, I'm not calling it that. And I kind of get that. I do. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I'm not being a hypocrite because there's certain things that my kids say to me now. Oh, you're not allowed to say that anymore. And I'm like, do you know what? I don't care. I've always said that. So I'm just saying it. And I said to Brian the other night, that kind of puts me in that same box of like, I'm not moving forward with the times, but I don't know, something like a no, name. But it, it, it's the, basically what we're, t- we're talking about, and this happens anywhere in the world, is older generations stick with what they were taught to. They yeah. don't like being told what to do. Nobody does, do they? No, like, they you don't, know? Brian. It's like, oh, you can't say that, you can't say this, you can't, you can't do that. Oh, no, no, that's called that. Yeah, because, you know, when we bought the the piece of land that we, we built the house on that we live in, um, the farmer... You know, he would look, look, look back up over his shoulder and he'd say, because I'd be saying, oh, Mount Taranaki looks good today. And uh, he'd be going, oh, it's actually Egmont. Mm. Of, you know, it's just we just call it Egmont, Mount Egmont. Mm. And that's it. And it's Egmont National Park. But there was, uh, I heard the other day that they're They've talking that, now, that yeah. to be uh, Taranaki National yeah. Park. Yeah, and that'll, that'll be, so there you go. It's, There's a yeah. challenge for us, isn't it? Because it is. all yeah. we've ever known is, oh, let's go to Egmont National Park. Yeah. And now we're going to know it as let's go up to Tadanaki National Park. Will you have a problem yeah. with that? Uh, not really. No. Because I've always looked at it as uh, Mount Tadanaki. Yeah. 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 So, it's, so a, it's not, a, like I say, it's not, I don't think this is a Kiwi thing. I think this is a generational thing. And I'm going to be really, really aware and honest and just think to myself, well, you just watch how you react then in certain situations. Like I say, you know, hands up. I find it hard to make changes, but to me, the name of something is respectful to go back to that, what, you know, what, what, what it was originally called. It's just, mm-hmm. and I get it. I, I just, yeah, I just, I, I find, I struggle with that. I struggle with that attitude of like, well, we're not changing, you know, we've always yep. called it that and we're not mm-hmm. changing. And maybe that ties in with the POM thing. And like we've all, we've always called Brits POMs yeah. and we're not, we're not going to stop it's now. It's not a problem. And, and once it was, um, it, it, they don't really, they don't, you, you don't care if it hurts or affects someone because that's what we've always said. And actually the courts ruled it out as not being derogatory. Mm. And you're like, okay. But I think rather than ask the courts, ask the person you're talking to. Before yeah. I call you a POM here, does, yeah. it, does it bother you? Because yeah. no one's ever asked us that. No one's ever said, how do you feel being called POM all yeah. the time? You know, yeah. not all the time, but you know. Yeah. It's true though, isn't it, mm-hmm. Brian? So, mm. yeah. And so that's, that. That's. I'd be interested to hear from other people around the world if they come across that similar thing. Well, you they know, do. Like, the Americans, when, again, it's the English, when they go to America, they call them limeys. They call who limeys? Brits. Oh, Americans uh, call British people limes. limes. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah, it goes back for the sailing days when they used to have to eat limes to um, stop scurvy. See, I think all this is like an, this name it's thing old, is yeah. it's just genera- older it's generations. It's older generations. It? Yeah. It's like the old sailboats and they're coming in and it's like, oh, you know, the, the, the limes. It's no yeah. different than the, um, the uh, calling the Americans Yanks. Yeah. You know, they are the Yanks in the war, wasn't it? You know, the, the GIs were coming over. And basically, that they were called Yanks. Like, you but know? you know what, Brian? I mean, I know we're going completely off topic here. But I just want to say something about the word Yanks. Because I've only ever heard the word Yanks being used in a positive. So, oh, there was this six foot bloody Yank came into the club but the other night. I know. I've always, when people say, I don't I, use I don't, that word. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I've always used, the, the, the imagery that comes to my mind when I hear that word is a big six foot strong American um, works. What's it called when you work in the army? You know, um, marine. It, oh, oh yeah, yeah it's marine. A marine. But the GI is a general. Ins- oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, inscription, wasn't it? I think that's what the GI comes from. Like, you mm. know, but the Marines, they say. But can you imagine being in the trenches, knowing that those guys were back at home with all with all the girls? So What's that's that? where maybe where you get that idea of that, um, you know, six foot six big American yeah. chap. And it's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. And that's why it's bloody Yanks back over there with our girls. Oh, OK. All so right. you see what I mean? That's So it's the same sort of thing. It's not in, yeah. in a bad way, but it's just like that's the bloody Yanks. Mm. You know? And I think, do you know what, as well, someone, I owe this to YouTube. Someone left me a comment and said the same happened in New Zealand. 
So all the guys went off fighting. Yeah. Americans came over and mm-hmm. dated all the women, going to the dance. Yeah. Cheeky little buggers, you say. Twirling them round, <laughs> yanking them along. <laughs> Look how well I uh, yank. Where's, where's, where's all the boys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, hello. Mm, hello. <laughs> There's no one here. Yeah. Anyway, so let's move on because we've been going on too much about that. Right, okay. Number two, tall poppy syndrome. Yep. Which, again, it, it, we, are, we have struggled coming up with these things because... As you know, we're flipping. We're very passionate about New Zealand. Yeah, but tall poppy syndrome, Brian. What's your thoughts? Well, it, it exists here, but again, it's a bit more of the older generation. Um, whereas, it, tall poppy syndrome just means that um, it kind of it says it in the saying, which just means that you know the tallest poppy will be knocked over basically by the winds. You know, all the others are hugging the ground and just you know keeping the feet on the ground, but the tall poppy ones are trying to get up there and you know literally will be blown over. So, you know, New Zealand, again, it's changing now, you know, um, whereas if you were driving around in a flash car at one time, um, it would be like, you know, that guy's showing off like, you know, so you, if you ever go to, you see the farmers, you never really see their cars, you know, they're in a garage because, you know, some, some flash, flash farms, they've got a nice Mercedes there tucked away in the, um, in the garage and you never ever see it like you know they're in their old battered old ute going to four square and then at the weekend they jump in the ute uh, in, in the mercedes and, and have a blast around the mountain drive it to auckland yeah, yeah. and that's it you <laughs> no know one knows me up here spend all just, the money. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that, that and so that's where it comes from it's like if they do have it then you know they kind of hide it and won't show you know off any wealth or anything like that will they mm. like you know it happens in the uk as well but it, it, it i don't te- think it does well, it you does can't wait to show off in England, Brian. Oh, yeah, but that's the people who are who haven't got it. No, but do you remember when we went to buy that fifth wheel? That no, we went to buy the caravan to start my little burger um, business. Yeah. We went. We were having it. We were. I was starting like a, a mobile cafe. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we went yeah. up to Manchester to have this um, bespoke. Oh, it's Preston actually. Oh, was it? Yeah. All oh, right, Preston to have this bespoke, which is in Lancashire in England. Yeah. Bespoke um, van S- made stainless steel <clears throat> van. It was. And the guy that was selling it to us, right, he said, excuse me a minute. <coughs> the guy that was selling it to us, he, he said, there's going to be a bit of a wait. It'll be ready in about three hours. Do you, have you got a spare hour or so? Do you want to, I'll just take you out to my place if you like. And we, we just thought he was taking us for a cup of tea. And we got in his car and he drove us to his house, his, his mansion. Yeah. And I've never seen such a show off in all my life, Brian. Yeah. Wasn't he? Because we didn't talk with a northern accent, we just talked like we're talking now. And he was almost like as if like, oh, listen to you, toffs coming up, you know? Oh, do you reckon that's what oh, it was? That, he felt that, a little for bit. For sure, he felt a little bit. A little bit undermined. Um, so it yeah, show us what you've you got. Know, he, he talked with a northern accent like that and, and we didn't. Mm, that's a beautiful you accent, know. by the way. That's my accent. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like, who cares what you talk like? But he took us round his house and he said, oh, yeah, this marble worktop cost us 14 grand. And, um, oh, yeah, we've got a swimming pool. And, yeah, we're going to have a hot tub put in as well. And, oh, these electric blinds, you just yeah. touch this button on your phone. and it, Oh, not on your phone. Touch this button on the wall and it all opens. It was just like... This is embarrassing. Yeah. I've never... The, <laughs> that would just be the opposite of tall poppy syndrome. So when you say it happens in England, that's I don't think it does really, to be honest. But that's a classic example of it, isn't it? Like, you know, because that you'll be shouted down sort of thing if, if, if you do do that. But like I say, it's yeah, changing now because, you know... <laughs> I'm the tall poppy basher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get back in your place, lad. Who do you think you are? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the the thing is, you know, New Zealand's changed so much even in the last sort of 12 years. You know, uh, house prices have gone through the roof and everything like that, haven't they? Like, you know, yeah. so um, the, there are people making money and the population's getting bigger. So it's – and you do see all these flash things. So it doesn't – you know, I can go back – I imagine go back to the 70s. It wasn't so flash, like, you know, because New Zealand went through some tough times years, years and years ago, like, you know, because we are cut off from the rest of the world, like, you know. Um, and a lot of things sort of happened in the 70s, 80s that, um, you know, made, made it tough for them to trade with other parts of the world because of the EU, et cetera, and things like that, you know, because they were doing a roaring trade with the UK, which stopped overnight. So I don't know. It's that tall poppy syndrome. It does exist, um, but it's changing, you know. It's mm. like you won't come over, you know, it's you've only got to go to where we live here in uh, in, in uh, just outside of New Plymouth and um, – it's, there's, there's quite a lot of wealthy areas. There are poor areas as well, but it's the 
the amount of building that's gone on in the last 15 years has been phenomenal, hasn't it? It's New Plymouth expanded so much. Yeah, but building isn't really anything it, to do with tall poppy, is it? It makes it? tradies have more money, so they're driving around in flash I don't think it's the tradies that are being tall poppy. No, it's not. Well, who, who is it then? I don't know. Just yeah. I think it's just... I don't know. That's a good question, actually. And like I said, I, I haven't really come across it when I wrote that down as my thing that I don't like about New Zealand. The only, thing I, the only reason I wrote that down, because something happened the other day, and I thought, that's really sad that you feel like that. And you just touched on it before, Bri. Someone down the cafe down the cafe that we always go to he is is he's a hard-working businessman and he drives this clapped out old battered van and he loves cars his passion mm-hmm. is cars yeah and especially european cars yeah. because that's what he specializes in selling and he said to brian oh he's got this really lovely car at home and i said and brian said oh why do you drive your van then and he goes oh can you imagine he said if i turned up at the cafe he said, in my flash car, he said, I'd be, oh, who do you think you are, mate? You know, and laughed out of town, he sort of said, didn't he? Yeah. And I thought, God, that's sad. Yeah. And the car he was talking about is a $200,000 car. Yeah. That's how much, you know, so it's a real flash Mercedes. He actually hadn't picked it from the UK because it was a end of line one or whatever it was, like, you know, and... You know, he's worked all his life. He's yeah. he's sixty odd years old, and you know, he, he's he, he works seven days a week. Tell the truth, Brian. What? Right, just tell the truth now. What do you think when you see someone? Say you're at the traffic lights in your little Peugeot that we've mm-hmm. got, and then next to you, you just hear this. Vroom, vroom, vroom. What and of ne- a Tesla? Next to you <laughs> is a really, really expensive car in the car driving seat is a really good looking guy a he's yank got, he's got, no not a yank he's got <laughs> his elbow out the window yeah and he looks at you a little bit dis no no actually not disdain looks down he looks, at me. no 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 he doesn't look down no. at you okay. he doesn't look down at you he looks across he smiles yeah. but as he pulls away he leaves you in a cloud of dust yeah. what is your first thought about that man driving that car cock <laughs> <laughs> No, and I've, cha- I've changed so much. I used to think that all the time. Like, you know? I just think big cock now. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and it just, you know, this is what they were saying about um, flash cars and things like that. And he's, that, that flash car is just um, to make your neighbours you know, envious. And that's why you buy these flash cars. And I just thought, oh my goodness, it's so true, isn't it? Mm. You know, it's so, who are you trying to impress? So anyway, there's no tall yeah. poppiness going on no, in our family. All. I'm not like that one bit, me, the pom. <laughs> right, moving on. And this is, um, actually, this is a serious one now. And I don't know, will Finlay's um, podcast have gone out by the time we release this? Or probably, will it yeah. be coming up? No, no, this, this one will go up probably soon. Okay, uh, before, yeah, this one will go up. But Finlay's. coming up in the in this, in this show is an interview that I did with... Um, uh, family friend. Not in this particular show episode. You mean in, in, as in the another podcast, podcast episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, on it's a drama, and I think I'll probably yeah. put it on here as well because it was so good. It was an interview with a family friend. He's a 22 year old guy, born in New Zealand, and he just talks about what it's like to grow up in New Zealand as a lad. Um, and he said something, and I thought yes. And he said the biggest struggle. Growing up in New Zealand as a guy that's got any sort of emotional, mental health problems or anything going on is the attitude of Kiwis. She'll be right. And I said, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? Even though I I kind of know know what it means. And he said, it's just that whole, you know, ah, harden up, mate. Don't want to talk about that. She'll be right. You'll be all right. You know, let's get on with it. Push eh? it under the carpet type thing. Yeah. And he said, it's just so dangerous basically mm-hmm. and he'll tell you why it was dangerous so you'd have to listen to that episode but yeah that's going to be my number three one is just that whole it worries me about the the, the male suicide rate in new zealand it really it, does again it, it comes back from the generational thing of what we're talking about which is a gen, you know new zealand is changing and, and and it's kind of sad a lot of it because you know new zealand's ha- has or implemented some for the first you know they're first of the line with a lot of things with implementing changes and equal rights and things like that. Mm. Like, you know, as in, you know, gay rights, women's rights, um, uh, indigenous people's rights Mm. uh, to vote and all those sort of things uh, like that. Like, you know, and it's quite sad when you actually look at it and it's still quite a male chauvinistic 
society to a degree with the older generations mm. and it is pushed on to the the younger ones like you know just that thing you don't play rugby well why aren't you playing rugby like you know Although it's, in that conversation that I had with Finlay, I asked yeah. him about that and he said, no, no, I was never expected to play rugby. That was yeah. interesting. Yeah. It was quite, it, it was such a great podcast. Just look out for that one. But yeah, it's it, it worries me that whole, again, and I don't want to be flipping goody two shoes here. It's like, oh no, but New Zealand isn't like, but I'm telling you from my experience, I've got a son, he's 20 years old. And all I have, all our experience has been is his openness, his drama yeah. teacher, Warren, his drama teacher, would spend hours talking to him about how he was feeling. Yeah. You know, Philip, his friend, his musical um, director that he was working with now, again, talks about his feelings. So Jim, his karate teacher, you know, that did karate with him yeah. all his life, very, I mean, he was very Kiwi as and very strong, but he, he talked to them, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, I think yeah. we've been very, very lucky. And I told Finlay like this, I think we've been very lucky in our personal experience that we've had some fabulous people come into our boys' lives. Yeah, yeah, well, we have, but again, um, y- you know, there's there's always peer pressure from from s- uh, being a- at a school. doesn't matter where you are in the world, does it? Like, you know, no. there, there is always that. And sometimes you fit in, sometimes you don't. And it's it's how you fit in into the, mm. those environments, isn't it? Like, you know, so we're not saying New Zealand's perfect um, and we're not saying it's no, uh, you know, no worse than anyone, or anywhere else, but... Yeah, it's, um, I think as well, you know, the, I was saying this the other day is when they talk about male suicide rates, because, you know, you you can go online and you can find out, yes, there are, but they're very honest, the Kiwi reporting these type things and not turn around and go, oh, no, we won't say that because that's not, I know, that's yeah. not good. Like, you yeah. know, and you, and you know that in some countries it. it'll just be like, no, we just need to literally brush that away yeah. because, you know, it's it's not acceptable to commit suicide type yeah. thing. But here the reporter, and it's just like, you know, it, it is a problem. It's like family violence. You, you can read up on that, but they they want it to be brought out and gone, we need to stamp this out. That's what I'm saying. They've been quite first to the That's line. That's a really like, good you know? point. Yeah, that is a really good point. And they, they do bring it to the forefront. You know, it's even like road accidents, you can look at that and you can go, it's quite high per capita, you know, um, because they generally want to bring awareness to the people mm. that you know you need to sharpen up on the roads you need to slow mm. down and sharpen up you know and mm. be aware of what you're doing get off the phone you know uh, it's just like you know they, they, they were quite early on to ban phones mobile phones and all those sort of things when you're driving mm. you know? this is supposed to be an this is supposed to be the things we're mad about we're, yeah, we're, all is. we're doing is turning it all no, into a positive what i'm trying to say is like you know, New Zealand can be quite a testing ground, can't yeah. it? Like, you know, we're, 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 yeah. they'll try these, they'll, 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 they'll test things out here and stuff like that. So, you know, going back to that, she'll be all right. I totally agree because, you know, it used to happen on the building sites. And I'm not talking mentally. I'm just talking health and safety was non-existent when I first came to New Zealand. You know, literally there was no scaffolding. It was pieces of wood nailed to the side of the walls that, and you, you climbed on them like, you know. Um, and you made your own staging up and all that sort of stuff. Um, we're in, uh, it, we went through a huge thing in 2014 and changed, you know, the act of parliament was changed to be health and safety and risk assessments coming out your ears, like, you know. So I'm just saying it's like... See, I don't mind that side of it though, Bri. No, I, mental but, health, yes, that that is a serious problem and they need to, um, thank you, they are addressing it. But I must admit, I'm a bit old-fashioned when it comes to Oh, you know, she'll be all right. Just stick a pair of ladders up there and yeah, just get it's all right if you're running your own business and you're working for yourself. But it's the idea is like you know, people come to work and you expect to go home. Mm. You know, with everything, you know, your hands still intact and you haven't lost your fingers and, yeah, and it's so. all that. that's where it comes from. Like you know, it's like the idea of this is like you come to work, you'll go home tonight and mm. have dinner with your kids mm. because you have done it as best as we can do like you know Mm. so yeah that was it and like i say going back to that just that 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 whole young man i'm really glad you said that because i didn't think of it like that and they are they're really making it aware and finlay did say that he did say you know now it's on the bottom of cereal packets and it's on the bottom he said it's very much implemented if you're not feeling okay call this number he said it's very like natural and it's okay to call those numbers yeah you know yeah. But you're still battling with that. You'll be, she'll be right, like you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And but, oh God, I'm so glad that you said that actually because it's. I'm thinking on the spot now, but it makes me feel more 
pos- positive and optimistic about the fact that it is moving forward and they're not just because I mean I don't know this this is ignore everything I'm about to say but I would imagine that in a country like Japan I would I, I would imagine this is I don't know this for a fact but I would imagine again that's not something that is you it's good to talk about your feelings no, it, it, yeah, if, I don't know if, why I'm saying that but it's because I don't know Jap- why Japan but it's well, just I'm saying it because the Japanese are so proud Brian I know and, and that's so, yeah, yeah, but most 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 sort of cultures and um creeds yeah, are like you but know the, because pe- the japanese people that we met we, i know we've talked about yeah. japan beautiful country beautiful people but very private yeah very very remember when we went to hug them when we went and he didn't know what to do did he yeah. it was very yeah. it was very but that, that that's where it comes back to turning it back around to to that she'll be all right and that's people just think you oh, he's, he's a bit down well i'll be all right Mm. And that's it, isn't it? Like you know, but it's like no, you need to bring this out, and it it, it comes down to you know, it can just come down to you know bringing your kids up and just watching them and making sure they are all right and not be all right, mm. you know, because it's well, just, just listen to the I podcast know. that Finlay said because he 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 pointed out some really obvious. To be honest, when you listen to him saying, it, it's like, why didn't I think of that? You know, he said mm. these are the signs, mm. and it's just like. Oh, so powerful it's so good yeah anyway so that's it then isn't it bride we won't go through the list as long as your arm because we'll no be here there is you can then. go down architecture but it's just like oh, come on you come into no, new zealand that's the other not side things of the world we don't like no, no that's, but that's just yeah, yeah but that's what i'm saying you know there's things you'll miss um when you, when you come thing. down there, and it's yeah. a completely different thing like you know but it's you know if you want a change of lifestyle and to move forward in your life new zealand can be a fantastic place to live yeah you know yeah and yeah. i think going back to this guy in our community that asked this question i think you can if you want to hear the bad things about a country and all i mean there's there's a difference between yeah. weighing up the pros and cons i mean everyone wants to do that don't they it's yeah. like well, yeah well there must be some bad things but if all you're going to do is concentrate and focus on the negative 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 oh well this oh well they're not as good as that as in america oh yeah well they don't do that in the uk so we won't bother coming it's just like you're not really You've but, you've got to be able to see uh, through that and go you, to yeah, like, exactly but, like you've just done with that t- last question with that mm-hmm. last point is like yeah but we can make it better by doing this yep. if, you know if if you're in the country that you are and you know you find that you know you look at all the negatives that when you thinking of moving to a different country like the likes of New Zealand and stuff like that you've got to realize that you're going to come to a place that's very positive. And if you keep going on the negative things, then it's not going to work for you. No. Because the idea of you or changing your lifestyle to come over here to live in New Zealand is to be positive. And because it's a hard move to do, but to be positive and move forward, mm. you know, in your life. And it, it makes a huge difference. And you'll, you'll feed off the positivity of the people here. Mm. You really will. So, yeah. So if there are negative things like, you know, like, oh, the bacon, the bacon, can't get good bacon. <laughs> can't get the same sausages to get yeah. back out. Well, no, see, you're the other side of the world, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Cadbury's chocolate doesn't quite taste, taste quite the same. That's because yeah. it's made in Australia. It's yeah. not made in, uh, in, in, in Birmingham. Yeah. In so England. It's true, though, yeah, isn't it? It's like, oh, it the is. chocolate's not the yeah. same. But do you know what? Go and get a piece of kiwi, a Whitaker's chocolate is like, you're not going to mm. get better than that. It's just yeah. like, anyway, so you know what we're trying to say. Yeah. All right, then. So we probably won't see you now for a couple of weeks, will we, Brian? Because after this, it's going out every couple of weeks. So don't forget what we said. If you want more content, sign up for that free five-day video guide. And seriously think about becoming a member of our NZ Ahead membership group and getting all those videos, all those podcasts, and just connecting with other people who have got the same dream as you in life and are determined to make that dream become a reality. So... Yep. We will see you soon. You'll get the link for the five-day video guide at the end of this podcast. That'll be you'll, – you'll put that up, won't you, Bri? Uh, well, we, we, yeah. no, you'll actually put that up in the okay. notes. Right. I, yeah, I, I can't do that in the audio edit. Yeah. <laughs> so until next time, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Stay safe and um, I'll speak to you soon. Yes, uh, and kia kaha, which is stay strong and kia <gasps> ooh, stay true. Yeah, and stay true to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We have loved having you here with us. 
If you love this week's show, please share this with your friends. Send it to anybody you know that wants to think about moving to New Zealand and get on over here yourself. Tell them how brilliant it is as well. And also, if you haven't signed up for our free five-day video guide showing you what life is like, really like, in New Zealand, then go over to the website and sign up. You are missing out. This is brilliant. Go over to www nz ahead slash free and we will send you five days worth of videos about what life is like in new zealand you are going to love it so one more time that website that you need to sign up for the free five-day guide is www.nz ahead slash free so we're going to see you next week until then have a great week and we'll speak to you soon bye bye Say bye again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>